proclaimer of the Holy Gospel, according to the Holy Apostle and Evangelist Matthew. God, through the intercession of the Holy Glory, and the Lord of Apostle and Evangelist Matthew, grant you their proclaiming their power of speech for the fulfillment of the Gospel of peace. Grant you the grace to love the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Wisdom, let us listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. And to your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. Let us be attentive. At that time, as Jesus reached the country of the Gergensians, there met him two men who were possessed, coming from the tombs, so exceedingly fierce that no one could pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have you to do? What have we have to do with you, Jesus, Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now at a distance from them there was a herd of many swine feeding, and the devils kept begging him, saying, If you cast us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. And they came out and entered into the swine, and behold, the whole herd rushed from the top of the cliff into the sea, and perished in the water. But the swineherds fled, and going away into the town, they reported everything, and what had befallen the men possessed by the demons. And behold, all the town came out to meet Jesus, and on seeing him, they insisted that he leave their district, and getting into a boat, he crossed over and came into his own town. Glory to you, O Lord, Glory to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Today we heard the Gospel which said that uh, Gadarene demoniacs were healed and I don't know if you try to place yourself in the in the context of the gospel but uh, I always try to think about well what if I were there and we see this great miracle these men who are their lives are ravaged by demonic activity and Jesus comes and sets them three free and then I, I think to myself Oh, that would be so exciting. That would be such a moment that you would always remember it. You would always be thankful for it. You would always praise God for it. Unless you're a pig herder. <laughs> All of a sudden, Jesus has destroyed your livelihood. And so it says that the people from that district, which tells you that um, the district probably had a lot of pigs. Now, you may not know this, but this is something to which I can sincerely relate. Because growing up in Galva, Illinois, population 2,500 or something like that, there were more pigs than people. As a matter of fact, the neighboring town of Kiwani, Kiwani, Illinois, is known as the hog capital of the world. And every year on Labor Day weekend, they have Henry County Hog Days. And this is where, I shouldn't say it, but I will, where human beings get transported and become pigs because they drink all kinds of beer and then they eat all kinds of corn on the cob and that has a very deleterious effect upon the human body. <laughs> and so it's just a wild free for all. and. Uh, and so they're celebrating, though, their livelihood, which is raising pigs. Okay? So I imagine if, you, if Jesus came to Kiwani, Illinois, and said, you know, I'm going to do some amazing things here in your city. I'm going to heal the lepers. I'm going to deliver the demonized. I'm going to make the blind to see and the lame to walk. And I'm going to do all kinds of fantastic things, but there's only one requirement. You got to stop being pig farmers. What would be what would be the response of the city council? 
No. Oh, what would be the, the uh, response of the Chamber of Commerce? No, 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 no. Now, I'm making a little bit of light of this whole situation, but in reality, what we see in the gospel is that even though Jesus comes and does a great work of God, we see the people's orientation, their perspective on life will, will color everything about their response to what Christ does in their midst. And so what do they do? They, they ask Jesus to leave. They ask Jesus to leave. They don't want him to stick around and cause other herds to run off the edge of the cliff if that's what he's in the business of doing. Because as a Jewish rabbi, and as a Jew, period, pig was an unclean animal and they had nothing to do with it. And so they want him out of there. And I don't think it's too far of a stretch to say that sometimes we see in our own world where even though God might do something amazing, there are people that will still reject it based on their perspective. He's disrupting their worldview. He's disrupting their way of interacting in their relationships. And we could go down many rabbit trails to talk about how that manifests in today's American society in particular. I think you get what I'm saying. That Christ comes as the deliverer. Christ comes to set us free from demonic behavior, from uh, all kinds of manners of evil that beset us. But some people don't want that. They want to hold on to their old lifestyle. They want to hold on to their worldview. And so Jesus, what does he do? He leaves. He leaves. You say, well, why didn't he stay and just deal with those people? Well. You know, that's just not the way God tends to do things. He lets us suffer the, the harvest of our own planting, if you will. And we see this over and over again in the Old Testament, is that what you sow, so shall you reap. But the uh, real warning signal is, is that you sow to the wind and you reap the whirlwind. the whirlwind. It's always bigger than what you thought it was going to be. A kernel of corn doesn't fall into the ground and just become another kernel of corn. It falls into the ground and becomes an ear of corn. And it has many manifestations of the one kernel. And that's the way it is in life, too, is what we do. We might think, well, it's no big deal. But, you know, in reality, it could come back as having grave consequences, multitudinous times over what we thought would happen. So we have to be careful how we live our lives and, and what our life perspective is. And so I would like to say today that that is homily 1A. Now I want to shift to 1B. I was tempted to have a 1C. Actually, in a correct outline form, it should be just simply A, B, and maybe C, because I'm not going to have a 2A, so therefore I'm violating. But anyway, you know what I'm saying. And so what I want to do to, now for the next few minutes is I want to read to you the life story of a saint who got it when it came to understanding who Christ was and was willing to lay down everything. They didn't hold on to their, their need for a, an occupation. They didn't hold on to their need, which by the way, just on a sidebar note, which is really interesting that we have in the world today a situation where people are being forced to make decisions in order to keep their job. I just, it's a strange world we live in. But uh, this is a, a woman who her livelihood, her personhood, her family heritage, none of it mattered in comparison to the surpassing knowledge of knowing Christ. And I wanted in particular to read about great martyr Marina because as you know, my daughters are not Orthodox. Um, a couple of their children are. And uh, I smile, that's another story we'll talk about maybe during coffee hour. <laughs> But uh, in spite of the fact that they're not Orthodox, Prayatasa and I decided that we would hang icons as patron saints for each one of them. And so our youngest daughter, oh, I cried. Sheena, um, you know, my girls always have this big debate, who's my favorite? 
and I would say, you're my favorite oldest child. You're my favorite middle child. Well, Sheena is my favorite youngest child. And Sheena, Sheena's name is Sheena Marie. But from very early on, we started calling her Sheena Marina. And so when we became Orthodox, it was a matter of time before we really thought maybe Marina had adopted our daughter. And it's today that we celebrate her life. And so I want to read her life to you. Because as the priest, I have this prerogative. <laughs> the holy great martyr Marina was born in Asia Minor in the city of Antioch of Pisidia into the family of a pagan priest. In infancy, she lost her mother and her father gave her into the care of a nursemaid who raised Marina in the Orthodox faith. Upon learning that his daughter, daughter had become a Christian, the father angrily disowned her. During the time of the persecution against Christians under the Emperor Diocletian, 284 to 305, when she was 15 years old, St. Marina was arrested and locked up in prison. With firm trust in the will of God and his help, the young prisoner prepared for her impending doom. The governor, Olimbrios, char charmed with the beautiful girl, tried to persuade her to renounce the Christian faith and become his wife. And just sidebar note, this is kind of the way the world goes about it. They try to woo us away from Christ, one way or another. You know, in subtle and not so subtle ways. But the saint, unswayed, refused his offer. The vexed governor gave the holy martyr over to torture. If I can't have her, nobody will. Having beaten her fiercely, they fastened the saint with nails to a board and tore her body with tridents. The governor himself, unable to bear the horror of these tortures, hid his face in his hands. But the holy martyr remained unyielding. Thrown for the night into prison, she was granted heavenly aid and healed of her wounds. They stripped her and tied her to a tree. They burned the martyr with fire. Barely alive, the martyr prayed. This is amazing. Lord, you have granted me to go through fire for your name. Grant me also to go through the water of holy baptism. Hearing the word water, the governor gave orders to drown the saint in a large cauldron. The martyr besought the Lord that this manner of execution should become for her holy baptism. When they plunged her into the water, there suddenly shone a light, and a snow-white dove came down from heaven, bearing in its beak a golden crown. The fetters upon St. Marina came apart by themselves. The martyr stood up in the font of baptism, glorifying the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. St. Marina emerged from the font completely healed without any trace of burns. Amazed at this miracle, the people glorified the true God and many came to believe. This brought the governor into a rage and he gave orders to kill anyone who might confess the name of Christ. Same thing as in the gospel that we read. Some people were blown away and, and believed in God. Some people whose livelihood and who they are was tied to what, what was happening, refused him and, and rejected him. 15,000 Christians perished there. And the holy martyr Marina was beheaded. The sufferings of the great martyr Marina were described by an eyewitness of the end named Theotimos. Up until the taking of, Constanti of Constantinople by Western Crusaders in the year 1204, the relics of the great martyr were in the uh, Ponta Penteo Monastery. According to other sources, they were located in Antioch until the year 908 and from there transferred to Italy. Now they are in Athens in a church dedicated to the Holy Virgin Martyr. Her venerable hand was transferred to Mount Athos to the Vatapiti Monastery. Oftentimes we don't a, know the story of the saints that we remember that day, I think this is worth remembering. Not just because it's my daughter's patron saint, but because she was an amazing woman who lived her life for Christ and died for Christ. And as Subdeacon Philip will appreciate wholeheartedly, we need to listen to what we sing about her. Your lamb, Marina, calls out to you, O Jesus, in a loud voice. I love you, my bridegroom, and in seeing you, I endure suffering. In baptism, I was crucified so that I might reign in you, and in dying so that I might live with you. 
accept me as a pure sacrifice, for I have offered myself in love. And again in Kentucky, adorned with the beauty of virginity, you have been crowned with unfading crowns, O Marina, having shed your blood in holy martyrdom and radiant with the miracles of healing you have received from the hand of your Creator the prize of victory. May we too be victorious in Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.